the best way to understand piecewise defined functions is to analyze an example and then just abstract from that example to any other problem. So let's take a look at an example. Here is f of x equals, and I'm going to have two pieces to this one. Let's say the first piece is x minus 1 squared plus 2. And I'll say that this is for values of x less than or equal to 2. And then let's say the second piece is going to be minus x minus 3. And this will be valid for values of x greater than 2. So there are two pieces to, to this function. We say it's a piecewise defined function because the value of the function, the algebraic definition of the function, changes depending on the value of x. When x is to the left of 2, it's this first piece. And when it's to the right of 2, it's the second piece. So that's why we call it piecewise defined function. So like if I wanted to evaluate f of 0, I would look at I look over here. This is this is the part that tells me which piece I look at. 0 is less than or equal to 2, so I look at this first de uh, definition. And so that's going to be 0 minus 1 squared plus 2, which is just 3. So f of 0 is 3. You don't use the second piece because this is only valid for values of x greater than 2. If I wanted to evaluate f of 2, well, I would look at the first piece again because 2 is less than or equal to 2. 2 is not greater than 2, so I don't use the second piece. And so I get 2 minus 1 squared plus 2, which would be uh, 3 again. Now, if I wanted to evaluate f of 3, well, 3 is greater than 2, so I use the second piece, and that would be minus 3 minus 3, which is negative 6. So this is how you evaluate the function. The value of the function depends on which piece you're in. Well, now let's take a look at uh, graphing this. So let's just draw our x and y axes. Now, this first piece, I'm going to forget about everything else. I'm just going to pretend I'm graphing x minus 1 squared plus 2. That's the first piece. This is a parabola that opens up, and it's shifted to the right one unit and up 2. So it's going to look like this. There's a parabola, it opens up, and I don't really care um, exactly what it looks like. We don't need to be completely accurate. So that's what it looks like for all values of x. But this is this uh, parabola is only valid for values of x less than or equal to 2. So what I'm going to do is where x, where x equals 2, let's say that's right here, the function doesn't, it's not valid there. So I'm going to erase that part everything to the right of 2. So that's I'm just taking a piece of it. I'm just taking the left-hand piece starting at 2. And then since, since it says x less than or equal to 2, I'm going to put a solid circle there to indicate to the reader that the value of the function at 2 is given by this point right here. It's the y coordinate of that point. So that's the, the first piece of the function. Now what I do is I graph minus x minus 3. Uh, I didn't, didn't make my y-axis uh, low enough. Well, this is a, a line that, that has negative slope, so it's going down, and it goes through 0, negative 3. So it's going to look something like this. This is going to be an a inaccurate graph because I didn't draw the axes white long enough. But we can still get an idea what's going on. So it looks like this. Well. The value of the function isn't valid for values less than 2, so what we do is we cut it off and we erase the part to the left of 2. Those parts aren't, aren't valid. So we erase it. And I use an open circle here because the value of the function at 2 is not given by this line right here. It's only the first piece. And so this is what the graph of f looks like. Let's uh, draw this a little bit, uh, a little bit better. So it's this parabola. It's going to look something like this. So that's what the graph of f looks like. And then the question is, what is the domain and range of this function? Well, domain is the values of x for which you get an output value, for which there's a corresponding y value. So graphically, this means I look on the x-axis, 
and I look at the points on the x-axis that correspond to a point on the graph. And we see that that point, that point corresponds to a point on the graph. This point corresponds to a point on the graph. This point corresponds to a point on the graph. And, and we see easily from the graph that every point on the x-axis has a point on the y-axis that it corresponds to. So the domain is all real numbers. Uh, we would in uh, interval notation minus infinity to infinity. Well, now the question is, what is the range? So let me go ahead and get rid of this. Well, the range is the set of y values that have a corresponding x value. Well, we notice right here, here's a y value. I just call it y1. This y value doesn't have a corresponding x value. When I draw this horizontal line, it doesn't intersect the graph. There is no value of x whose output value is y1. So this, this number right here, whatever it is on the y-axis, is not in the range of f. The range of f is the set of y values that have a point uh, that correspond to it. So the way to think of this graphically is I just take this graph and I project it onto the y-axis. I take every point and I map it to the y-axis. And I do the same thing for this other piece. Every point, and I just horizontally go to the y-axis. And then I ask myself, which points get mapped to? Which numbers have a corresponding point? And that's these numbers that I'm outlining in red on the y-axis. So I'm going to call this A, and I'm going to call this B. And so we see that the range is going to be from minus infinity to B union A to infinity. And the reason for that is these values right here, these are the, the minus infinity to B. It stops right here. And the reason I don't include B is because I had an open circle there. The reason I include A is because it corresponds to this point right here. It's an actual point. This, this open circle was the high point of the graph. Over here in the second piece, this low point is, is on the graph. It didn't, didn't matter what the circle was because that circle wasn't the lowest, the lowest point. The lowest point corresponds to this value of A. Now, to find that actual value of A, we would use something like a computer or a calculator, like use the find minimum command or, or yeah, the find minimum command to find that uh, Y value. Remember, we're only talking about Y value. We're talking about range right now. So this is only the values of Y that, that correspond to an X value. We don't care what the X values are. To find B, we, we would normally use the find maximum command. We don't, we don't need to do that in this case. And we, and we shouldn't because of the open circle. You don't want to. The open circle is the highest point. So we just go back to the definition. And we just plug in uh, 2 at that, at that, uh, in this expression right here. So we get minus 2 minus 3, which is minus 5. So this y value right here is, is minus 5. So I get minus infinity to minus 5 union a to infinity. Uh, and I, it's, it's a bracket, not a, not a parenthesis for the a. It's a bracket a. That's how you find the range. Uh, we'll, I'm going to do this in the computer and show you how to find the a in just a second. Now let's suppose we, let's suppose we had another uh, piecewise defined function. And suppose it looked something like this. Well, now, if you wanted to find the domain, the domain would not be all real numbers. I project these onto the x-axis for every point on the graph. I just look down and, and look at the x-axis. And we see that the values on the x-axis that have a point corresponding to them are these values right here in red and these values over here in red. I'll call that A and this B. That A looks pretty bad, so let me change it. So this is A, and that's B. And so the domain would be minus infinity to A union uh, bracket B to infinity. And then for the, for the range, you would do the same thing we did before. For the range, that would be these values of Y union these values of Y. 
And so my range would be minus infinity to C union G to infinity. Now it's possible that you can have a piecewise defined function with more than two pieces. You can have as many pieces as you want. You can have like three pieces. You can see definitions like this uh, frequently. And so you see that there are three pieces. The thing is, you, 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 you graph these, and then you, you analyze the graph to find out what the domain and the range are. And you may need to use uh, commands from the com computer or the calculator to find these special values. But conceptually, it's just you just enter in the right command. It'll tell you what the A and the B are and the C and the D. So let's take a look at some actual examples using the, the computer. So the first thing is, if you want to define a function as a piecewise defined function, use the palette. Um, the one that you want to use. Let me uh, let me close this part up here. Give me some room. Okay, use the palette. This is the one that you use. It's a piecewise defined function. By default, it only has two pieces. You can add another piece by hitting Control Return. So I'm going to go ahead and type in f of x underscore colon equals, and then I'm going to type in this right here. And then I'm going to define my first piece as x minus 1 squared plus 2. And I'm just going to copy what we had before. This was for x less than or equal to 2. And then this would be minus x minus 3. And this is for x greater than 2. So I've defined my function f. And now I can plot it. And then I see that I have the two pieces here. Now, notice that Mathematica does not tell me, it doesn't put a solid circle or open circle. You have to do that. So if you wanted to, to, to graph this, let me change the, the plot range on this. So if you wanted to... Um, if you wanted to indicate this to the reader, then you need to use the, the graphing tools. So we'll go ahead and do drawing tools. And then we can add a solid dot. So there's a solid dot here. And then we had an open circle in the other place. So I just put an open circle here. And the key is not to make it too big or too small. So we have an open circle there. And this is to indicate to the reader that um, this is the value of the function at 2, and this is not the value of the function at 2. It's all the values greater than 2 down here. It's all the values less than or equal to 2 that you use for, for this top piece. Now, the value of the function at 2 is, as we said before, it's going to be positive 3. So Mathematica understands piecewise defined functions. You just define it like you would any other function, but you just got to use that little piecewise defined uh, piece. Now, if I wanted to find the range of this, I need to find the low point up here. So I need to find the minimum of f of x at x around 0. And it tells me that the minimum value is 2, and it occurs when x is 1. So the minimum value is 2, so the range is going to be from 2 to infinity up here. It's the values of y. So the smallest value of y is 2, it goes 2 to infinity. That's for that piece. For the other piece, we need to find this high point. Now, Mathematica is not going to be able to find this maximum right here. The find maximum command is not going to work. Um, watch this. We get find maximum f of x. Even if I start in the, in the right piece, x greater than 2, it gives me 2 comma 3. That's this point right here. So it's giving me the wrong point, even though I wanted this value right here. To find that value right there, I just manually e evaluate this piece at 2. And that'll tell me what that, what that y value is. It's going to be negative 5. 
So the so the range is going to be minus infinity to negative five, and then it's going to be from two to positive infinity. And the domain is all real numbers, because we can see right here x less than or equal to two and x greater than two encompasses all real numbers. So every value of x has corresponds to a point. And also because these these functions are all defined for all values. So in this problem, it's going to be um, the domain is going to be all real numbers. I want to do one last example with uh, piecewise defined functions. Let's say we, we've seen before that the cube root function, Mathematic has a problem dealing with it from a college algebra perspective. So I'm going to define a function, a piecewise defined function, that will give me the, the cube root of, of x. So the cube root of x is going to be cube root, it's going to be minus the cube root of minus x. I'm going to put a minus sign out front when x is less than 0. And it's going to be the cube root of x when x is greater than or equal to 0. And the reason this works is because cube root is an odd function. And for odd functions, f of x equals minus f of minus x. So the cube root is always equal to minus cube root of minus x. That is always a true statement because the minus sign, sign inside the radical, you can pull it out because the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. And then you get negative 1 times negative 1 is 0. It cancels out. But the reason this is going to help us is because when x is less than 0, minus x becomes a positive number. And, and cube root doesn't have any problems with positive numbers. So this is, so this is why it's going to work. So I'm just going to execute this command, and then I'm going to plot it. We're going to get the, the right graph. And this is the graph of f. And if I wanted to find f of negative 2, or f of negative 8, uh, excuse me. So f of, uh, that should be lowercase f. So f of negative 8 is negative 2. So setting up this piecewise defined function allows me to define cube root of x, and it behaves in the way that I expect it to behave.